mean, there are already issues related to, for example, lethal autonomous weapons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is the impact of these technologies if they're applied to military activities, if they're applied to weaponry uh, in general? Um, that would potentially have a huge impact on international peace and security because it might, in fact, begin to, to, to change the, um, you know, how the international norms and instruments and, and, and mechanisms which really governed um, this area, um, military activities and, and general sort of areas of warfare, it might begin to impact those norms and, and applications and implication of the, um, I implementation of those norms. So um, we have to put our heads together. It's beginning to happen already. Uh, there is a group of government experts starting these discussions uh, this year, um, but it, you know, the multilateral discussions on these issues normally takes a long time, um, and the challenge here is that the technological advancement or progress is really taking place very rapidly. So we might be uh, completely outpaced by the speed of those technological developments, um, which is why we think it would be really critical uh, to have this kind of discussions, dialogues that we, we have together with experts and researchers and industries, um, not just uh, uh, government experts. Well, you know, there are some people who are beginning to say that perhaps we should have some sort of a guidelines or, you know, one step further, some sort of regulations uh, begin to be sort of looked into. Um, again, not in terms of development of technologies. Um, it, these are actually dual purpose. I mean, th these are technologies that can be misused for malicious purposes. So the guidelines and, and potentially regulations or maybe it should be in the form of a code of conduct, you know, ethical code of conduct will be in the areas of applications of those technologies. I mean, no one's really saying that we should regulate the development itself, but we need to really think very hard about how we might apply those technologies. And the application really needs to be on the positive side of it, of, uh, you know, that will benefit uh, humankind and, 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 and all of us, um, but not in the areas of potentially damaging for um, humankind. Speaking, I would suggest that we also create incentives uh, for different actors, including government actors, um, to, to really be convinced that by signing up to those guidelines, um, they will in fact benefit. Um, if you actually only use the pressure tactics, uh, very often um, it doesn't really yield the results that we are looking for. Um, so I think it has to be a very strategic combination of incentives, um, moral sort of a high ground, putting you know momentums and, and pressures to sign up, um, and of course the civil society actors uh, speaking up and then also approaching government actors that this is in fact in 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 the interest of governments to look into and, and have serious and honest conversations of this. Because if we actually fail to, um, to somehow you know, eliminate the negative impact of those high, high technologies, we will all lose together. And that's the, the kind of scenario that we would like to avoid. Um, so um, it's the, the partnership I think we need to have. It's that needs to be inclusive, um, that goes beyond governments, that includes, you know, the sort of uh, scientists and, and researchers and, and engineers and designers of those uh, uh, technologies uh, who will be speaking up and, and voicing um, what they need to voice and then put that together with uh, the kinds of uh, um, multilateral inter international uh, process um, leading up to uh, very constructive discussions to have the, the regulations and guidelines type of um, uh, discussions. So I think it has to be multiple um, uh, strategies that we have to use. It would be very good if there is a sort of a consensus that they will, you know, everyone agrees that there is positive side and then there is negative uh, impact potentially. 
um, where I come from, I think understanding of that uh, multiple impacts of those um, AI will be quite important. It would be also good, as I said earlier, um, that each actor, um, you know, different actors gathered here, um, each of us actually go back with the respective understanding of the role that we need to play uh, in the um, forthcoming discussions. Um, and then the third is a sense of partnership. Um, if we if we can leave this conference thinking um, that you know what kind of a, a partnership we need to forge, uh, and then if we can actually start making that network and and, and partnership, um, then I think we will have achieved quite important things here. <laughs>